Here we are with the Bugatti Tourbillon. I don't even know where to start with this car. It's unbelievable what they've achieved here. Let's, let's stop talking, let's go look, come on. Okay, so let's get right into the bit that flabbergasted me. It scrambled my brain. It's this engine. It's a naturally aspirated V16 that makes a thousand horsepower out of 8.3 liters. There's a couple of tricks in there. It's over square. It has a 92 millimeter bore. It's port injected, but it has a 14 and a half to one compression ratio. How do they do this? I don't know. They were talking about gasoline printing, all these things. I'm just so glad it exists. But the next coolest thing is right down here. This year, is a big ass diffuser. They're very proud of this because normally with US crash regulations, you wouldn't be able to pull this off. They told me it'd be down here, the crash bar. But what they did is these guys are actually the crash structure. And that's how they can pull this diffuser right up and make it go all the way, start right behind the driver. And it's a huge downforce producing element. It's integrated in the whole design of the cars. Incredible piece of carbon fiber. But if you look in there, there's a wishbone. You can just see the carbon sheath around it for aerodynamic purposes. It's unbelievable. When you look at the whole rear end of the car, it's just like alien. It's like, it's, I, I, <laughs> Talk about the aerodynamics of the car. A big part of how they were able to achieve the concept was by actually completely changing the cockpit of the car. The seat position is now fixed in place. The pedals are adjustable to meet you instead. And they built everything about the car around the driver because they had to fit in the 25 kilowatt hour battery pack in this tiny little car. So the spine, the central spine of the car is actually that battery pack, as well as the area behind the driver and passenger seat. It's pretty unbelievable, and you'd think everything else would be an afterthought, but they have these gorgeous little details in the gauge cluster that inspired by watches and the center stack. It's just beautiful, it's classic Bugatti. All right, all of that, and we haven't even gotten to the front end. Up here is a 600 horsepower, two motor e-axle that weighs just 176 pounds. It's unbelievably lightweight for what it is. And it's kind of the heart and soul of why this is possible with this V16. All above my pay grade, but I think I know a guy who can explain it to us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the man himself, the person who did the car. How you doing? Hey man. Tell me about this gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Well, hundreds of people that brought it to where it is now with me, but the initial idea, you know, everybody thought the electric car guy will now make electric Bugatti, but I actually thought it was wrong and I had to convince the shareholders. Before we started with the project, I wanted a naturally aspirated V16 with a thousand horsepower and I wanted a very emotional combustion engine. And what's the disadvantage of such an engine is it likes power compared to a turbocharged engine. So the W16 had 1,600 horsepower, but the sound was very focused on the turbo. So it didn't really have so much engine noise itself. So I wanted to have very emotional engine noise. And what is this one rev to? Nine and a half thousand. Nine and a half thousand RPM. That's your aspirin. Unbelievable, 8.3 liter, nine and a half thousand. How is that possible? Well, so we have a very powerful electric powertrain, which makes up for the disadvantages of such an engine. Low end torque, so you don't have the problem of not having so much power at lower end of RPM range. And it gives you additional 800 horsepower for a combined power that's higher for 200 horsepower compared to the Chiron Supersport. And one of the things, you know, when I started to work on this together with the team, I wasn't really sure what it means for the design of the car if the car is longer. Because obviously the W16 is a lot shorter than the V16, plus you have batteries, plus you have motors. So I was like, okay, probably the car will need to be longer. And I talked to Frank and Achim, our design team, and I asked them what would it mean if the car is longer to package that, and they were like, no, 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 don't do very it. Bad. Yeah, very, very bad. Yeah, very bad for yeah. design. It'd be very bad if it was longer. Yeah. This car is barely longer than the Chiron, right? 29 millimeters. 29 millimeters, just barely. What's that? Like you said, it's like this big? Yeah. That big? Yeah. Just barely longer. That's very difficult to do because of the longer engine, because of the battery, but there's lots of trickery to make that work. And one of the craziest things for me is like, so in the Chiron, you sit quite far forward. It's the same with this car. And in the Chiron, you can actually feel like when you're sitting in the driver's seat, you notice that your left foot is a little bit pushed inside by the wheel arch because the wheel is right next to your... So, oh, just, so you, just Chiron things, you yeah. know, when you get in your Chiron. And normal yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, normal car guy <laughs> stuff. So basically your wheels, your feet are here, like right on the axle of the car. And then you have a short overhang and the Chiron didn't have an electric axle. It didn't have cooling systems for the hybrid system. And here we are not longer. It's actually the same length, but actually lower. So it's, it's quite a bit lower. It's like two inches lower here in the really? front. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And despite that, we have 600 horsepower dual electric motor, a bigger trunk, actually. Unbelievable. 
and the hybrid uh, cooling system, battery cooling and so on, and the engine cooling. Amazing work, amazing work. I, I just, again, come over here, come on. <laughs> just come on, <laughs> do it to me again. Thanks, man. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. This is Bugatti's and Matei's new car. I can't believe I dapped him up. There's a lot of hyperbole us reviewers toss around about these cars. I'm serious about this one. This is unbelievable what they've achieved here. V16, 9,500 RPM, 1,800 horsepower. They're pushing the limits. They could have phoned it in. They could have just been like, yeah, it's another Chiron. This is a whole new thing. This is the future. And please, Bugatti, let me drive it one day. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ready? All right. It's just making different noises every time. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure, okay, we'll figure that out in a second. Technical support.